If you're looking for a lightweight drone that doesn't hurt your bank balance, then this might be for you. What's the crack? Welcome back. My name is Dan and today I want to talk about the DJI Mavic Mini, a super lightweight drone that is surprisingly affordable, specifically from a beginner's point of view. I am a beginner drone pilot person. This is my first drone. I've never owned a drone before. I've never flown a drone before. And today I took it out for the third time just to see what it's like try and get some footage for you guys to see if it's easy to use. Can someone like me who's never used one before get it up in the air and get some pretty decent shots? I hope so because I haven't seen the footage yet. If you're interested in drones then you probably know that the Mavic Mini is 249 grams making it super lightweight but there is a reason and the reason is Drones that are 250 grams and up have to be registered with like the FAA or the FCC if you're in the UK or the US, which means you don't need to register this drone. If you're in the UK or Europe, that could change. I have heard that there's some EU laws being put into place that require any drones with cameras to be registered. I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. But for the time being, the Mavic Mini does not need to be registered at all which is great. You can put it in your bag and just start flying straight away. You don't have to tell anyone. You are still required to fly within the law, within the legal realms of how drones are operated. That doesn't mean you can just start flying it wherever you want. So just bear that in mind. I'm all about budget gear and affordable tech, which are words that you normally wouldn't use to describe a drone. But at 369 pounds, the Mavic Mini is definitely in that realm, especially when you compare it to the next one up, which would be the Mavic Air, which is nearly 800 pounds. I, however, got the Fly More combo, which was 459 pounds. The Fly More combo comes with the battery charger and three batteries, meaning you can fly more. Each battery gives you about 30 minutes flight time, so it is really easy as soon as the battery is done, just the chop and change stick a new one in and away you go as well as propeller guards i have used these they clip on super easy to use especially if you're flying indoors the drone is so small that you can fly it in the house or in a building wherever you are these are definitely useful you also get a nice little case to carry it all in with a little handle and it's not super hard but it definitely protects everything that's in there as well as the other knickknacks it comes with, spare propeller blades, a screwdriver to change those blades over uh, to USB cables, things like that. For the price, it's a good deal. Um, so far, I'm actually liking it. But the most important thing in the box is obviously the drone, which is super tiny, super lightweight. It doesn't have a battery in it right now, but even with the battery in, it weighs nothing. Unfolded and ready to fly, it is still super small. It's got a tiny footprint. But it's also got the three axis stabilized gimbal, which means even if this thing gets buffeted by the wind, that footage or the pictures are gonna be super crisp. So I have actually only flown this drone a handful of times. I took it out today to try and get some footage for the video and the weather started to get quite bad. The rain was coming down, the wind was picking up. But we'll have a look at the footage and see what it looks like. I tried to use a couple of different settings such as the sport mode, position hold, and the cine still mode just to see if we could tell the difference, if they make the footage any better or worse, and whether or not the drone actually flies at 29 miles an hour. The drone is naturally in P or position hold mode, uh, which means it will just hover where it is, it won't move until you tell it to, and it moves at an average speed, it climbs and descends at an average speed. You can hit the little button on the screen to switch it into sport mode, that will give it its top speed, it's top acceleration and it will fly at 29 miles an hour. The third mode is Cine Smooth mode, which slows the drone right down, giving you more control as you try and get those smooth cinematic shots of whatever it is that you're looking at. I tried that out too. The drone goes really, really slow, but when you're flying that slow, it means you can control the camera a lot easier. Perfect for beginners or people who haven't flown the drone before. It saved me a couple of times as I was getting quite close to some trees. Just switch it into C and fly away slowly. There could be a couple of criticisms about the Mavic Mini, such as the fact that it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance, except for the two small sensors on the bottom, which means if you're gonna fly it into a wall, it's going to fly into a wall or a tree or whatever it is. Personally, however, 
I don't think that's such a bad thing, especially for beginners, because it teaches you to be a little bit more careful when you're flying it, a little bit more aware of what you're doing. I've crashed it once in my house, but um, that's about it. The blades have taken a bit of a beating so far, feeling a little bit rough. But apart from that, I don't really have any criticisms. I'm perfectly happy with this little drone, especially for my first time and for an affordable price. The drone pairs with the DJI Fly app, which I believe is a new app, I'm not 100% sure. It's a bit bare bones as well, super easy to use. It's still got all the features that you need, such as navigation and the warning system to tell you whether there is strong winds. I did, however, have some transmission issues today. So the Mavic Mini flies using Wi-Fi transmission instead of a radio signal which I've heard isn't as good as a radio signal. And I did have some issues with that today. I don't know whether it's because of where I was flying or because of the weather, but there were issues, I have to say. The controller feels really good in my hand. I have no real issues with it. I like the fact that the, um, the sticks unscrew and they clip in to the base. Although every time I go to fly it, I forget that and I always put my phone in and then I have to take my phone back out to screw them in. But it keeps them safe, especially if it's in your bag, maybe rattling around, it stops them snapping or coming off. Again, the Fly More combo came with a spare pair of these. And it doesn't feel too heavy in my hand when my phone's connected. The controls feel really responsive. The controller itself is also pretty bare bones. There are only four buttons on it, which I think makes it really easy to control and handle. You've got the two joysticks, power button, a return to home button, and a button for video and a button for photo, which are on the shoulders. There's also a little wheel there on the shoulder just to control the, the gimbal, which for me took a little bit of getting used to while you're trying to fly and then control the gimbal as well. I suppose it's just something, just takes time, just takes practice. And when it's folded up, it's pretty small too. It's smaller than the drone itself. Again, makes it easy to put in your bag, transport, it's lightweight, it doesn't weigh anything. So does this count as budget gear? Certainly, I think so, especially when you compare it to other drones on the market. What you're getting for such a low price makes drones affordable, but not at the cost of quality. I think the Mavic Mini is definitely gonna be in my bag more often than not, and if you're interested, there will be an affiliate link in the description below. If you like this video, then please do hit the like button down below. And if you want to see more budget gear, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. And uh, I will see you next time with whatever it is that we've got.